Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Let's start our video with the story of the dumbest scammer ever. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. I have real money in the car. Time for another tale from my job at a major home improvement store. The following events took place roughly three years ago at the second store I worked. It was a slow weeknight about an hour and a half before closing time, 10 p.m. A handful of customers were browsing around, which was normal for this time of night. The store had developed a theft problem over the prior six months, so me and the other cashier working kept our eyes peeled for anything suspicious. A woman who appeared nervous approached my register with a pair of drill combo kits, scanned the items as normal, and the total came up to be in the neighborhood of 390 US dollars. Read the customer her total, and she gave me $400 bills. As soon as I touched the bills, I knew they were counterfeit. I told the customer, wait a minute, and signaled my head cashier to observe the bills. The drills were not in reach as the other cashier was removing the security devices at the adjacent self-checkout station. My key for the devices had been misplaced. Management in their infinite wisdom did not provide counterfeit markers to the cashiers. The light method was the only way for us to check bills. After holding each bill to the light, me and my head cashier reached the obvious conclusion that they were indeed a photocopier job. I immediately returned to my register to follow up with the customer. CL is counterfeit lady. Me. Ma'am, I'm unable to accept these bills as payment. They're counterfeit. CL. That's not possible. My bank just gave me these bills. Me. Again, I can't accept these bills. Do you have another form of payment you'd like to use? CL. Hold on, I have real money in the car. Let me run out and get it and I'll be right back in to pay. With the counterfeit money still in hand, I watched the woman hop into the passenger seat of a vehicle that promptly sped away, cleared the transaction from my register, and immediately sent the bills to the cash office. A couple days later, the lady who worked back there congratulated me on a good catch and informed me the bills were handed off to the Secret Service for destruction. Nice try, counterfeit lady. Better luck next time. Maybe try a base material that's more convincing than construction paper? I have real money in the car. Wow, it never ceases to amaze me how stupid people can be. And our next story. Customer thought we were wasting her time. So I work as a mover for a very small moving company. My boss, let's call him Mike, is a really nice guy. It's really just a two-man operation with me working as a subcontractor under him with a few regular guys we call in for bigger moves. It's really physically demanding work sometimes, but typically our customers are super nice and the pay's pretty good. Most people are just happy to have someone else to lift their heavy stuff and get it into a truck. And we're always super careful to not cause any damage to the buildings we're moving in and out of or the items we're moving, which most people appreciate. Not this lady, let's call her Darcy. So Darcy booked a move with Mike and told him she had a small storage unit she wanted us to load up onto a 20-foot truck. We said no problem. As the date of her move approached, though, so did a huge snowstorm. Days before her move, the news started reporting that the weather was expected to take a severe turn for the worst. Not uncommon for the time of year in our state, but also something not to be trifled with. We called Darcy a few days before the move to see about rescheduling to avoid the storm, and she said she absolutely had to move that day. No other days would work. A lot of probably much smarter movers would have canceled, but after talking, Mike and I thought it was no big deal. We move in the snow all the time. Just meant we'd have to dress appropriately and be extra careful not to injure ourselves or damage any property. Cut to the day of the move. We get to Darcy's storage unit, expecting a 10 by 10 by 15 standard storage unit full of your usual stuff, based on what she'd indicated on the phone, and loaded into a 20-foot truck. That's a pretty easy job to get done in the two hours she'd already prepaid for. As we pulled up, the snow was already coming down pretty heavily, and the first thing that made us nervous was the truck. Instead of a 20-foot truck, there was a huge 26-foot truck. Darcy greeted us by the truck and showed us the storage unit. Darcy, okay, so this is our unit. We shut down our business, and I'm moving it out of town to pursue other opportunities, and I need all this loaded up in two hours. The last movers I had got it unloaded in about that long. Mike said something about the truck being bigger than she told us. Darcy, yeah, it's the biggest one you all had. Last time we used another company and it was much bigger. 
I'm worried about getting it all, but you guys will have to figure it all out. I need all of it. This was a huge storage unit, like the kind you'd store a few cars or some farm equipment in. When we opened it up, it was filled with what appeared to be the contents of a couple of pretty decently sized businesses. A dozen of those huge floor-to-ceiling filing cabinets, several desks, office chairs, some really huge glass tables, and all of it was incredibly heavy. Now, our company safety guidelines for weight limits are 100 pounds per person lifting an item, but there's no real practical way to enforce that in the field, so we usually wind up using our best judgment, even if the item is over that limit. Nearly everything there was over limit, but we had our equipment and we were pretty confident we could handle everything, weight-wise. Mike and I are both pretty strong, but in my estimation, this was definitely going to take a bit longer than two hours. Mike told her that we do our absolute best. To be fair, he should have leveled with her then and there that it would take a bit more time, but he probably wanted to see if we could just get it busted out as quick as possible and see where we were at before getting the customer needlessly worried. Darcy sat in her truck nearly the whole time we were working so she could stay warm. Perfectly understandable since it was minus 2 Fahrenheit outside and the snow was coming down pretty hard, though she'd occasionally roll down her window to offer up critiques, mostly about how much time we were taking going up and down the metal ramp of the truck, which was now covered in ice and snow. About an hour and some change into the move, Darcy gets out of her truck and starts chatting with Mike about her previous movers, how they did cause some damage to her stuff, but they were so fast. It was weird. She went back and forth between complaining about them and praising them for their speed, and she kept referring to them as the professional moving service I hired, which really bugged me because the way she said it seemed to imply that because we aren't a big national company like Mayflower, that somehow Mike and I weren't professional movers, despite the fact that this is literally our full-time jobs. Now we're far enough into this move that we could tell this was going to run long. Mike decides it's a good idea to let her know that it's probably going to take half an hour or so longer than expected, which was still a feat considering how much there was to move and how well packed this truck was. I pride myself on playing a mean game of truck Tetris. Darcy was not having this. She started to get upset and started saying how we're just trying to get more money out of her and we were dilly-dallying. Yes, those words actually left the mouth of a grown woman. Then she starts in on how the professional movers got this same stuff unloaded in two hours. It should take the same time to load it. Mike explains to her that unloading always takes less time than loading because you're moving it into a bigger space and you don't have to pack and pad the stuff to fit into a truck. I also mentioned there's literally a blizzard coming down and we're only going a little over. She gets quiet and seething. Mike can tell how angry she is and lets her know we won't charge her for any extra time since it's not her fault the weather is crappy. He also brings up that they damaged her stuff and we've done a pretty good job. Darcy, I don't care. You said two hours. I expect it done. Just get it done. I'm going to leave you guys a terrible review. She stomps back to her truck without saying a word. I'm usually pretty chill, but I was already getting increasingly mad at this woman. Her yelling at my boss and calling us lazy when we were risking our health and safety to move her stuff in a blizzard was just too much for me. Mike thinks about this for a moment. I know customer reviews are super important to us as a small business. The booking site we use highlights the last handful of reviews, so a bad one takes forever to stop showing up is basically the first thing people see when they click on your page. So I'm expecting Mike to try and keep her happy, but instead he just grins and turns to me. Mike. F it, you heard her. She wanted it all loaded in two hours. That's exactly what we'll do. The front half of her truck was loaded up neatly with everything padded and stacked tightly floor to ceiling to keep it from moving on the road. I pride myself in my ability to load a truck properly and safely without wasting any space. The second half of her truck was the worst, jankiest truck I've ever loaded in my life. We're taking huge, heavy office furniture haphazardly stacked on top of each other at the weirdest angles. Heavy stuff on top of light stuff. Anything just to get the storage unit empty and the truck door closed. We even stacked really heavy office chairs on top of glass tabletops. By the end of it, the truck looked like you'd asked Esther or Jigger. By the end of it, the truck looked like you'd asked Esther or Geiger to draw you a picture of an office. I just want to be clear, we never intentionally damaged a customer's property, and we would never. We pride ourselves on our professionalism, courtesy, and specifically our ability to get your stuff where it's going safely. But the particular combination of unsafe conditions and this lady's outright disregard for our safety and feelings was just too much. 
and technically we didn't damage anything. Nothing was broken when we closed the truck doors, but literally the first bump in the road or decently tight turn was definitely going to cause hundreds, maybe even thousands of dollars in damage. We closed the truck door and walked over to Darcy's truck and let her know. Mike went to her truck, told her we were done and that he wasn't going to charge her at all for the move. She insisted that she's not poor and doesn't need charity. And Mike just said that it was clear that she wasn't happy and that he didn't need her $150. That's right, we charged $75 an hour, so the extra half hour we needed to do it right would have cost her a whopping $37. He canceled the job and refunded her what she'd already prepaid. As we drove away in Mike's car, I looked at him. Me. You realize that by the time she gets where she's going, she's looking at a lot of damaged furniture, right? She's going to hit us with a bad review and maybe even try to sue. Mike. She was worried about paying an extra $37. I doubt she'll risk more money on hiring a lawyer. And besides, you can't leave a review on the site if the job gets canceled. We just gave her exactly what she wanted. And besides, it's worth losing out on the money I would have made just to see her face when I said I didn't need her $150. When he dropped me off, he still paid me for my time because F that lady. My boss Mike is a really nice guy. Oh, how I would have loved to have seen her face at the end of that move. When the truck door opens and she sees whatever goods were damaged in transit. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.